thank you for joining us today. We are the teen librarians with Arapaho Libraries, bringing you another round of sixth grade books. And Catherine's going to kick us off. The Circus of Stolen Dreams by Lorelai Saverin is an excellent choice if you want a fairy tale retelling or kind of a mythical retelling, but scary very creepy, I should say. Not so much scary, just unsettling and creepy. So this is a story of the Sandman. If you're familiar with Sandman's story, he comes and steals dreams or brings dreams. And the premise of this story is that three years ago, Andrea's little brother disappeared in the middle of the night. They don't, there's been no trace of him. Police have basically given up the search. And Andrea feels really guilty because she believes that it's her fault. And so she has been trying to figure out what happened to him and find him. And one night she stumbles across, uh, upon this place in the woods near her house called Reverie, which we discover is a dream world. And in order to get a ticket to go in, you have to give up one of your memories. And it's this circus. And as she goes through, she discovers things seem great. Like her problems are gone. She can't really remember what, what things were going wrong. What we discover is that the memory they took for Andrea to get into reverie is the memory of her little brother being taken. So she no longer remembers that he's missing. And she starts to, things start to get weird really quickly. There are tents that you can go into, but what she discovers is that these tents hold the nightmares of little children. And you cannot leave the tent unless you have gone all the way through the nightmare. Um, and as she spends more time in reverie, she discovers she's trapped and she thinks this might be where her little brother is. So she's going to try to get him out. It is a tense, suspenseful, and as I said, very creepy story that I highly recommend. And that's The Circus of Stolen Dreams. So this book turns out it's a sequel, <laughs> but I'm going to book talk it because I didn't know that. I picked it up because I loved the cover. Rebel in the Library of Ever has this beautiful cover and it's about Lenora. And I read this whole book not knowing that there was a book before it. So you can start here if you'd like, or you can start with the first book in the series. Either way will work. And this one, Lenora is, she lives in our world and she's practicing, she's going to kendo lessons to become a very athletic and warrior-esque person for a specific reason. She anticipates that she is going to be fighting killer robots in the future, and she's got to be ready for this. She has to have that skill set, right? And then she shows up at her library, and she gets kind of whisked away to somewhere called the Library of Ever. And this is a library that seems to shelve every book that has ever existed in the history of the universe. And there are librarians there. And it turns out Lenora is sort of an apprentice librarian, but something is wrong. She's been to this library before and she's coming back after a long stretch and it's very clear things have changed. There seems to be an evil new director of the library who is doing weird stuff, getting rid of things that maybe he shouldn't be getting rid of, and people are kind of disappearing, librarians are getting fired. And this is a sort of adventure story of Lenora trying to fix things at this library. The part that I love the most is the library is full of magic. There's these sort of pods that you can use to travel all over the library really quickly. There's weird sort of whimsical rooms that are full of strange numbers and all sorts of just weird magic that's so much fun. There's gliders, all sorts of adventure stuff happening as well as the mystery of what's really going on in the library. I really loved this and if you like kind of hint of real life, mostly magic type stories, this would be a good place to start. So Never After the 13th Fairy is a really good fantasy book with fairy tales sprinkled in unique ways, which I really liked. And it's about Philomena. She loves reading. She's super smart. She's very into her books, uh, but she does have a rough time at school with bullies. So just to give you a heads up, um, there is a bit of bullying that she experiences throughout this book. But one of her favorite series that she loves reading is Never After. And it's this like different kind of world with these different fairy tales that are happening within it. Um, she just really becomes immersed in it. And it feels like you're actually there. It feels like a place you could be. Um, and that's her favorite part about it. And she's super excited. The last one in the series is coming out. She's waiting for it. Uh, and when she goes to get it on the launch day, um, it did not actually publish. So of course, 
she is super disappointed and when she leaves the bookstore she sees this person under this tree and she's like I don't know who he is um and he starts following her and there's something going on and so um she decides that she's going to turn around confront him and he looks just like how she imagines her favorite character from never after and so she's like oh my gosh were you also waiting for the book she's super excited to find another fan um and he introduces himself as Jack which is the name of the character Jack the uh giant stalker is his name in the um Jack and the Beanstalk is the reference there um so they start talking and he has no idea what she's talking about this book, but he keeps referencing these things from the book and time goes on and they realize she realizes that never after is an actual place and Jack is stuck between never after and our place where we are uh, earth and so she has all this knowledge about the books because she's read it and he is shocked he doesn't know anyone that knows as much about his land as she does and so he hires her kind of to try to figure out how to get back to never after it is such a fun story about finding that other place imagine walking into your favorite book uh your favorite movie and being able to engage and interact and see the things that you have wanted to look for and actually see them with your eyes and engage with them it is so much fun i super loved it philomena is a great character um, just very fun, um, very interested and curious, which I really liked. It wasn't like just walking through, you got to engage with it too. Uh, so if you want something a little different, um, then that, that would be a good one for you. That's never after. If you like Minecraft or if you enjoyed Because of Mr. Terrupt, I highly recommend Ben B and the Ch Teacher Griefer by K.A. Holt. It's a really fun, hilarious story um, that's written as, it, it's a multi-format. So it's, parts of it are written in verse, so in poetry format. Some of it is told through illustrations from one kid's notebook. And parts of it are told kind of as a stream of consciousness of one of the other characters. And it's about these four students who are having to take summer school because they failed the state standardized test that they call the fart and they are going to have to retake it. And they all have what their teacher calls neurodivergence. Some of them have dyslexia, some of them have ADHD, um, other problems, struggles with learning. And so they are having to take this summer school class. As you might imagine, none of them want to be there. None of them enjoy reading. And so the teacher makes a deal with them or they kind of try to negotiate with the teacher. And so she tells them if they will read one chapter per day, she for every chapter they read, she will allow them to play 10 minutes of this Minecraft game. It's like Minecraft, but they don't call it that in the book. Um, and so they strike this deal. Her one condition is that they'd have to teach her how to play. And as you might imagine, she's a complete newbie and she does not know how to play this game. She's not good at all. This story is hilarious. I highly recommend it. And if you've heard me book talk for any amount of time, you may know that there's one spoiler I always give for books if it happens. And so my spoiler for this book is that the dog dies. So know that going in, there is a dog in this story and it does die, which is very sad, but I love this book so much. I was so surprised by it. I can't recommend it highly enough. So this book I want to book talk because if you are a Harry Potter fan and you're looking for more books with that magical world kind of hidden within our world, this would be such a good choice. It's so much fun and it's really, really entertaining. It's got mystery and magic and adventure, all sorts of things together. And it's about Amari and her older brother went missing or disappeared like six months before the story starts. And she and her mom have kind of been, they've been struggling, right? Like they don't know what happened to him. They don't know where he's gone. The police aren't super worried. They seem to think that maybe her brother is up to some shady stuff and has, that's why he's not back. But she knows that's not true, that he wouldn't abandon her and her mom this way. And then she gets a delivery that seems extremely strange. The person who delivers it to her at first says they're going to erase her memory of meeting the home. And she's just like, what? And then he kind of steps it back. He's like, oh, no, I guess you can know about this kind of mysterious, right? And she gets this 
she finds in her closet this briefcase with a message from her brother and a pair of glasses. And she puts the glasses on and she sees her brother. She gives him a big hug. They start talking. She kind of gets a hint of this sort of magical world. Um, and then she finds out that the brother that she's seeing and talking to is sort of like a recording. It's not her actual brother. Something has gone wrong. And he lets her know. He's like, I only set this up to send to you if something bad happened to me. And I don't he doesn't know what has happened. She doesn't know what has happened. And she gets kind of pulled in. Her brother has kind of set up this whole thing for her where she gets swept into this magical world that she didn't know existed. And it turns out that's where her brother was working. He was doing secret world, like work in this magic world. And now she's sort of on a quest to figure out what happened to her brother and try and find him. She's convinced that he's out there somewhere and she can get him back. And this has all of the things that sort of magic boarding school that you might imagine Imagine. it's got all sorts of really entertaining and cool magic from like shoes that let you run through the middle of the air to like really creepy monsters and magicians and all of these things so really really fun book I'm hoping it seems like it's the first in a series so there will be more to come and I can't recommend it enough Red, White, in the Hole is a great story if you're looking for one that tugs at your heartstrings, makes you laugh and cry. This one's a perfect one for you. I really enjoyed it. So Reha is torn between two worlds. When she's at school, she is the only Indian American student at her school, and she feels very different and othered at some points. And when she's at home, her parents raise her with Indian values and traditions. And so she's always felt torn between them, um, between the friends she has at both locations, because it's very much like Monday through Friday at school with some friends and Saturday and Sunday at home with other friends. And she just feels really like two different people. And and as she's getting older, she wants to be more what her parents call American. She wants to go to dances with boys and friends and wear clothes she sees other people wearing uh, that aren't allowed um, in, in her house, essentially. And so she finds herself struggling with her ama, her mother, because they do have these different ideas of what she should be wearing and doing, lip gloss, all of those things that you want to be um, experiencing as a young teenager. Um, but her ama becomes very sick um, with cancer and it's kind of, um, it happens pretty quickly and she is very startled by it. She's wanted to become a doctor. Um, that's kind of her passion to work with people and health. But as she sees her ama going through this, she realizes one, that she's terrified of blood. She's learning about all these different things. It makes her queasy, um, but also her connection to people and how scared she's getting with it being her mama that's sick, um, not knowing what the future holds for her. So then their connection kind of shifts um, and she starts to think about those two different worlds and how important both are in her life um, and how they start to kind of overlap because her friends are concerned about her as they hear about her family, but how she's also trying to keep it separate as well. Um, she likes having that different sides as well. So really struggling with both of those. And then at home with her mother not being well um, and her father trying to take that place. Um, there's lots of compassion and empathy and her family, the way it grows, her aunt coming um, over from India and, and what that looks like and the food that they're cooking. There is so much to this story. Um, if you are interested in a realistic story, I highly recommend Red, White, and Whole. All right. Thank you for joining us today. Those are all the books we have, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks. Bye. Bye.